Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about some of the best games in week three and week four of next season. Tons of games to look forward to. I cannot wait for these games to finally get underway, but we gotta wait a little bit longer. So let's preview some teams and we're gonna start with the Penn State Nittany Lions here today. There are so many uh, things happening in State College, so many changes from a year ago. Went 10-3 and three a year ago, and I think Penn State fans are a little sick of hearing 10-2, and 10-3, and 11-2, and two, all of these different uh, records that are very good records and put them right in the mix, but never quite get them over the hump, do they? So a ton of very different things happening in uh, State College, obviously. New coordinators, Tom Allen and uh, Andy Kotelnicki, coming over from, uh, he used to be at Indiana, but Tom Allen uh, comes over as the defensive coordinator um, there, and then Andy Kodnicki coming over from Kansas. Both very good hires in my eyes, but they got to hit at the end of the day. They really do have to hit. Uh, tons of losses on the defensive side of the ball. And then Olu Fushanu, the really, really talented left tackle out the door. So tons to worry about with this uh, Penn State team, and I think... Whenever you talk about Penn State, it always talks. It always starts with Drew Aller, and it should. Uh, he is someone that just has to take a very obvious step forward next year. He had some really good moments last year, I'll be honest. He had some games where he looked really good. He obviously has arm talent. He obviously has arm strength, but the consistency has not necessarily been there the way that Penn State fans and the way that James Franklin was hoping. So he's someone that has to take a big step forward. I think Andy Kotelnicki will help him a lot with that. I think he'll put him in very good positions to succeed. I think he'll at least give him a lot of really good shots to take that step forward. And I think one of the big ways he did that was adding Julian Fleming in the portal. Uh, this receiver room has never been necessarily world-beating. Uh, they've had a number of guys that have come through that have been very good. Uh, Jawan Jennings was very good for a number of years. Um, Jawan Johnson, I'm sorry, not Jawan Jennings. Uh, Jawan Johnson um, was very good for a number of years there. Uh, they had Chris Godwin back in the day. But at the end of the day, you need elite wide receivers to compete, especially against some of the competition that they're going to have to go up against. So adding Julian Fleming from Ohio State is huge. Uh, Lambert Smith also needs to be a huge part of that uh, equation because if he's not... Uh, as we've seen, a, a one-trick pony in the wide receiver room does not work uh, if you're trying to compete for a national title. So they might be adding more guys in the portal uh, come spring. I tend to think they might need one more wide receiver, um, but they have a solid group right now. And the tight ends, it gets a little bit more uh, sketchy. You know, losing Theo Johnson and him having the day he had at the draft combine shows you how big of a loss that is. Uh, he did a number of really good things in the pass game and the run game, so He's someone that's going to be tough to replace, but Tyler Warren is there. He has played uh, a good amount of time last year, so he has the experience. And then they are bringing in five-star Luke Reynolds, who's someone that I put as someone that has to make an impact pretty much right away for this team to succeed because that tight end package, especially in Andy, Andy Kotelnicki's offense, is very important. So it'll be very interesting to see uh, who kind of gets the most snaps there. Do they work kind of... Uh, 12 personnel with two tight ends and Tyler Warren more of a pass or more of a blocking tight end Luke Reynolds more of a pass catching tight end it'll be interesting to see how all of that takes shape but one of the big helps to Drew Aller and this team in general is having Nicholas Singleton and Catron Allen back uh, those are two guys that no defense ever wants to deal with I can tell you that they are both incredibly talented they can do a number of remarkable things in the run game and when you can do uh, really good things in the run game, it makes the pass game that much easier. And that's what they need to do for Drew Aller. So he's got to be really excited about having both those guys by his side coming into this year. But at the end of the day, they got to have blockers in front of them. And replacing three offensive line starters is not an easy task by any means, especially in the Big Ten where you're going to face some mean defensive fronts uh, in Ohio State and Michigan and all of these teams that are just remarkable uh, at that position. So they're going to have to fill those voids and they're going to have to fill them very quickly because that is really where their season is going to fall. If Drew Aller, Drew Aller can take all the steps forward he, he wants, if he's not you know, taking the step forward of, excuse me, if he does not have the time to process the field and go through his reads and do all the things that 
quarterbacks need to do, that step forward is not going to matter. He could be tons better in practice. He could be ripping the ball around. He could be doing incredible things. But if he doesn't have time to do those things, it gets a little bit more sketchy. So uh, the offensive line will be obviously a huge moniker for this team, probably maybe the most important moniker when it looks at when you look at the first couple of weeks. If that offensive line is playing out of their mind and, and protecting him really well, they might be off to a good start if he's if they're letting guys through and uh, missing blocks and missing assignments. It could be a long year for Drew Aller again and Penn State, so it'll be interesting to see how all of that develops. And then the the defensive side of the ball, losing a ton of guys. There's no two ways about that. Losing Chop Robinson as an edge rusher is incredibly tough to replace. Losing Johnny Dixon and Kalen King on the back end is incredibly tough to replace, but. They have a ton of talent coming in. A.J. Harris from the portal from Georgia is a huge pickup that they need to hit. Another guy that I had talked about, uh, I think, last week or maybe the week before. And then uh, Johnny Dixon, there, there has to be another quarter, uh, cornerback, too, in that room to kind of take over that, that void because as we watched last year, having those two guys on the field was a huge part of why that defense was so effective. Uh, being able to have two guys that you can put in man coverage and not really have to worry about is not a luxury a lot of people have. So um, there will be some interesting challenges for um, Tom Allen in this new year. There will be some interesting things that he has to deal with on the, the defensive side of the ball. But one of the things he does not have to deal with is finding a leader for this defense. Uh, that is taken care of. Abdul Carter is was a leader of this defense before uh this year and will have to be coming into this year because as we talked about earlier this week the new rules around um possible helmet communication this would be the guy um there's no doubt in my mind he would absolutely be the guy that had the head sh- headset on he would be the guy communicating everything and having that guy be the best player on your defense is obviously a huge help as well so i think tom allen has a ton to deal with uh this season has a ton to replace and make sure this defense is up to snuff because at the end of the day you're gonna have to face some teams that have some high-powered offenses and if you fall to another Penn State season uh, I'm not sure fans in State College would be too happy with James Franklin any longer but at the end of the day having Abdul Carter in the middle of that defense and having Tom Allen calling plays is gonna help there's no two ways about that but uh, as we talk about this Penn State team there are three names that are comfortably the most important names when you look at Penn State going into this year. They are the guys that will define how good they are, will define if they make the playoff, if they're able to compete in the Big Ten, if they're able to compete for a title. There's tons of things that are on the table, but Drew Aller, obviously. There's no question that he is one of the most important people for this Penn State team. But then the two uh, coordinators, Andy Kotelnicki and Tom Allen, both those guys got a hit. Um, and James Franklin, if he doesn't hit on these coordinator hires, he could have a problem. Um, there, there could be an issue in State College with uh, his job security going forward. But if he does hit on them, it could take a huge step forward. And the good news for them, I guess, is if you go 10-2, and two, you're likely in the playoff anyway with the 12-team uh, coming around the corner. So if you can do another Penn State season, you'll at least be in the dance and then you'll see what happens. But at the end of the day, Penn State t- uh, fans want to take a step forward. They want to be a bigger part of the Big Ten race. They want to go 11-1, and go 12-0. and They want to be one of the big-time teams uh, again. So I think 10-2 and would do the trick because it would get you into the playoff, but wouldn't necessarily make you a better team. So it's a very, very interesting... Uh, it's a very interesting year in the James Franklin era because it could go really well and you could go you know, 11-1 and one or 12-0, and 0, make the playoff, have everyone be totally fine. You could go 7-5 and five and piss off a ton of people and have a ton of people wanting to fire you and all of this stuff. Or you could go 10-2, and two, make the playoff, and lose in the first round, and then you're left confused again. So uh, Penn State fans might be up against it this year, but I think there's a lot of things pointing in the right direction for this team. So I really like Penn State. I think they have a chance to make a lot of noise, but a 10-2 and two season has got to get tiring at some point. So we'll see if uh, they can take a step forward. And even if they don't, if they make the playoff and maybe make some noise, maybe uh, it's not a problem for James Franklin at all. So a uh, very interesting thing there. That's a team that will 
play a lot in the college football world, especially in the Big Ten this upcoming year. But uh, that'll do it for this edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show, leave a positive review. It makes a huge difference for us here at the channel. Also, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram for all of the updates you could possibly want. We have so many people doing incredible work across so many different sports, so if you need any updates, uh, we have them all on our, our pages across every single social platform, so definitely follow there. But thank you so much for listening, and I will see you tomorrow. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like.